wanted to uh, first say thank you to um, the few but mighty, we decided, who came out to the High Times game last Friday. The weather was actually not terrible, and the company was fantastic. So I thought it was great um, social, and we'll have another one in um, August at one of the, um, the fifth music series. What's the date on that? Thursday, 17. August 17th. So I would love to have all our Rotarians come, bring your family, friends. It's a free event that night. So we'd love to have you all come out to that. And it's a great opportunity to get to know Rotarians that you might not sit with every day, you might not know well. Um, I wanted to just point out that we've got the address and um, sent cards for Carol Bennett um, to their daughter. So that's in the bulletin. And one other announcement, I will let Corey. Uh, yes, so the city has just launched their next step in our regulation master plan process. And so we're doing a few wide survey. So Mary Jane has a QR code up on the, the screen there, but also we have flyers on the table uh, for the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. We're just trying to get everyone's input uh, about our next steps. You know, we took big bites with the, the Central Rec Center Gymnasium and then the pool. And so now we're just trying to figure out which direction to go next. So we definitely want everyone's input on what they'd like to see in our community. Can you tell them how many people have been to the pool so far? So far, the pools welcomed around our numbers yesterday at our rec committee meeting were 16,700. And just in case you're not a super technically savvy like me, how the QR code thing works is with your phone, just take the camera out and aim it at it, and it will have a little thing pop up, and you poke on that, and the survey will come up. And you can do that now, and then you still have a survey later, and it will on your phone. Thank you. Um, and I don't know if uh, Corey or Steve, if you'd like to give um, an update on our code. Um, <laughs> yes. So this Saturday, uh, Ben, Elaine, and myself, some people from the Historic Preservation Revealing were at Parks and Rec with 14 kids. We set them up in three different departments. They learned how to cut chicken. They learned how to make banana tacos. They made chocolate bark. We made chicken nuggets. They tried food they would never eat in a million years. A lot of them started off by going, Ooh! but by the end of it, they were very excited and they wanted to go home and cook with their parents. I'm telling you, well, I've taught food now for almost uh, 11 years, and it's probably one of the funnest events I've ever done. I can see this through the kids' eyes and get them excited, because this was all about alternatives to fast food. And I, a lot of the kids went there, they left with a cookbook, um, and then Toby Prince donated taco holders and cutting boards, and then we brought in silicone bakeware, so the kids really left inspired. It was so much fun. So I, I think everybody should be a part of it. I wish we did have more Rotarians volunteer for that because I think we would have really had a lot of fun with that. So I think Beth had a pretty good time with it. Yeah, the kids were fun. hilarious. So thank you all for making that possible for the town. And thank you, Rotary, for doing that for the kids because I really do believe those kids left inspired and motivated. And a lot of them probably go into a food related industry and just make some things <laughs> We will do another one, um, probably in the spring sometime. Let's look at like last year. Travel sheet by anyway, so it's going to be a good trip more towards the fall. Uh, yeah. Just trying to do it all the way. Yeah. But, um, so Rotary is going to search on the uh, food for that. Um, so, um, a great um, thing that is done. Um, one other announcement I want to point out is we need to schedule our um, annual Cornwall tournament. Dave Williams' house that he's hosting that again. Um, so if you all go ahead and put that on your calendar. Um, and again, for those who may or may not be technically savvy, sometimes you can put it on your phone. There's a calendar there. And for those who don't have one at home, take an old-fashioned bulletin home and put it on your calendar. It's, it's, a, time. Time. it's a mystery time. Oh. <laughs> all day. Like, like, I don't even really do that. What time? <laughs> We eat about five o'clock. Yeah, we'll say five o'clock. That'll ask what it is now. Five o'clock. 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 Five
Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you all know me together as Wayne Underwood or Rotarian that doesn't do anything, and so I thought I'd come today and give you a different view of me as uh, Wayne Underwood, uh, someone who actually has done some things and is still doing some things, but maybe not everything. Um, also, I've got my guest today is Lucas Hunt. He's the commander of the squadron there in Ashbrook, NC 107, the Randolph Composite Squadron. And he's here kind of as my talk. But also <laughs> to uh, answer questions for you that I may not be able to answer. So let's see if we can get this to one here. Um, Civil Air Patrol has been part of my life for a long time. As a young boy, really, I think I joined when I was 13. My dad and I joined together. He was in the retired Air Force. And uh, through Civil Air Patrol, I was able to do a lot of things. I went to summer encampments uh, on military bases. I did Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida for a week. We got on the Coast Guard cutter in the Gulf, uh, flown a military aircraft. You know, things that a 13 year old boy thinks about but really just doesn't get the opportunity to do. I went to a leadership school for a week in uh, DC um, at the Andrews Air Force Base. So, you know, things that Civil Air Patrol uh, gave me opportunities to do, I think they built and helped me to be the person I am today. Um, let's see if this is. Yeah. Civil Air Patrol was really formed at the uh, beginning of World War II. And uh, you may or may not know, but all up and down the eastern seaboard, and even in the Caribbean, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, German submarines were sinking uh, American and British ships, any ships coming in and going out. And the, uh, the Navy uh, was stretched in, the Air Force uh, that really didn't exist, it was the Army Air Corps at that time. Uh, and so they, they needed eyes, they needed uh, assistance. And so the, uh, the government actually formed Civil Air Patrol in December of 1941, and it's comprised of volunteers. <clears throat> they were volunteer pilots that, uh, I guess some used their own planes, I guess, well, they actually provided planes, you know, all civilian, all civilian yeah. aircraft. And so, you know, they actually provided the eyes, and they would do uh, aerial reconnaissance along the coast looking for submarines. And if they spotted something, they could actually report it back to the Navy so the Navy could then kind of deal with it. Um, as things progressed, they actually, just uh, pictures of some of the early guys there, uh, as things progressed, they actually armed some of the Civil Air Patrol planes with small bombs so that they could react at the time. Uh, and there's a, uh, it's not a dispute, but it's, uh, it's not confirmed but it's always been the story of the Civil Air Patrol potentially sunk two German submarines. There's some controversy about whether that actually happened or not based on some documents that have come forward. But regardless of whether they did or didn't, you know, they, <clears throat> they formed a unit all up and down the coast, uh, formed units that were able to help the uh, government in the war effort. Um, and you, know, you think about civilians uh, volunteering to do things, and a lot of times it doesn't have a physical cost. But for Civil Air Patrol, it actually did. You can see you know, the lives lost and the planes lost during the war effort by Civil Air Patrol volunteers. After the war, the missions kind of changed because you know there's no submarines to look for anymore. But uh, the government realized the, the value of having a civilian aviation corps. And so they came up with different missions. Search and rescue, transporting blood supplies, uh, border patrol, lots of different missions the Civil Air Patrol could do, uh, working in conjunction with military and uh, governmental agencies. Uh, over the past year or two, they've actually incorporated Civil Air Patrol as part of the total force for the Air Force, which is comprised of the active guard, the active duty, their uh, the guard, the Air National Guard, the reserve units. And now Civil Air Patrol is an auxiliary. And they've done this because of the assets that Civil Air Patrol brings to the table. I mean, we have state-of-the-art aircraft with photographic equipment, uh, direction finding equipment. I mean, we've really been given a lot of things by the government that enable us to support them in missions that they do. All volunteers, all civilians, that uh, we are a part of their total force now. <coughs> We share some of the same core values that the Air Force does. 
integrity, excellence in everything we do, respect, and volunteer service. And that kind of resonates with me as a vocarian, you know, uh, service of uh, self. So, you know, uh, so like the cross, the same thing. And I think in some of the slides that follow, you'll see some of the service that, uh, not just people my age, but, uh, and I think these were kids, but, you know, when they come in, they can join as early as 12 years old as a cadet. So, you know, they are kids. But these are kids that are doing a lot to serve their uh, community, state, and nation. And I can't read my own slide, but down here. Civil Air Patrol is an organization that's all volunteer. Um, so, you know, what we are, that's it. We're a volunteer organization. It's combined of adults, the senior members, and then cadets age 12 to 18. And we perform missions that support the Air Force, the Department of Homeland Security, and FEMA. What we are not is we're not a military organization. We don't carry weapons. We don't encourage military service. We do opportunities for people who are interested. But uh, we're not a recruiting, agent, a recruiting tool for the military. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what we're about. I try to make that real clear to parents because you, you don't want your kids being indoctrinated or, recruit, or recruited into something that you may or may not have an interest in being part of. Our missions are really three major groups uh, aerospace education, which is the part that I'm involved in right now, the cadet programs, and emergency services. Uh, aerospace education is a big part of Civil Air Patrol. Uh, we try to encourage uh, youth to be involved in aerospace uh, activities. Uh, we have monthly <coughs> meetings that are aimed at aerospace education. And we try to make the, the training or the lessons both fun and informative. Um, and so, you know, they might include model airplanes, uh, launching uh, rockets, uh, building planes, which we've done. Um, We've got one that we'll be doing, which is called Fizzy Rockets. You take a film canister, you put some tablets in there, like alka or tablets, put a little water in them, and see how far they'll shoot. And so it's simple things, but you know, you can use simple things like that to talk about uh, Newton's laws of motion. So, you know, just simple little things you, know, that you can use to, uh, to train or help uh, kids understand their space. The value that you give to the community is think about things for our war. We now have Honda Jet. We have Boom Aerospace coming, and probably something else. So you know, these are companies that need kids, need uh, kids that are going to grow up interested in that kind of profession. We also offer orientation flights for our cadets. Uh, it's really part of a requirement that we've had. Uh, and I don't know if you recognize this one out here. On the far left there, that's Mr. Hunt. And were you a cadet at the time? I was, yep. Okay. Toward the, toward the end of my time to that. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I kind of, kind of maybe jump ahead of myself here a little bit, but one thing that I'm really proud about, uh, being part of, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm proud of being part of being Civil Air Patrol because I was able to see young men like Mr. Hunt go from being a cadet to now being the leader of the squadron as a senior member. So, and we have, what, three, four, Cadets, uh, yeah, now moved up. Yeah. Yeah. So you know we have uh, we have kid, people who were kids when I was last involved in it who are now in leadership positions in the squad. Uh, so you know I'm really happy to see that. Cadet programs. And I mentioned I was a cadet. My uh, younger son was a cadet. And that's really what got me back into the Air Patrol. Uh, I talked about you know, all these things that I did. When he turned 13, he said, well, you know, I really want to do this. Actually, when he turned 12. And so we went and visited several different squadrons, and he liked the one there in Ashburn. It was a small group, um, very hands-on, uh, emergency services oriented. And so, you know, we joined down there. And I stayed in, I guess, a year or two after he left to join the Air Force. But as a cadet, he got to go to encampments at Cherry Point Marine Air Station. Uh, at Jan Camp Lejeune, and I think also at Camp Butner, when we worked with the, uh, it's not the military, who did we work with there? It's the Air National Guard? Or the uh, Camp Butner should be uh, Air Force. Yes. Okay. Well. 
And these are pictures of some of the different things that cadets you know, get to do. You know, they get to participate in flights in military aircraft. Uh, the picture on the top uh, right there with all the kids in, the, in their blue uniforms, that would be a marching ceremony or a closing ceremony probably there on their accounts. As a cadet, I made it up to uh, first lieutenant. And when you, they have different phases in the cadet program, and when you complete the leadership phase, then that's when you move from being a, uh, a non-commissioned officer to being an officer. All the cadets have uh, military-style ranks, and it really is just a way of uh, giving them a progression, uh, a way of learning and progressing from one step to the next. But this is a picture of me and my son, both of us with our Mitchell for the certificates. Mine is a little bit faded, uh, but you know I, I was. That's another great honor, you know, to be able to stand with my son, both of us having completed the same achievement, and you know, that he goes on to be in the Air Force. <coughs> emergency services is uh, our third leg there. And as part of emergency services, we do quite a few different things. Um, the first one that we were tasked with, I guess, by the Air Force was search and rescue. <coughs> and Civil Air Patrol performs the majority of search and rescue for missing aircraft in the United States. So if a plane goes missing, the Air Force, uh, they have a, a sort of center, they will contact Civil Air Patrol in that area and give them mission activation orders, which would mean ground teams, it would mean aircraft in the air, uh, just different assets that are brought to the table and they'll find things. And it's a little easier now than it used to be because they have different technology to be able to find things that they didn't have. When I was a cadet, when I was a cadet, we had what you see here, and they're still using this actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the kid back there holding the pole up. That's uh, a direction finder that they can use to find an ELT or electronic location transmitter, which is required to be on all aircraft. Um, they have a better way to do it via satellite, I think, that all. But yeah, this is still you know, the older and primary methods of finding things. Lots of hikers carry personal ELTs, and so you know, this would also be used to find a lost person. These are some pictures from uh, probably practice search and rescue missions. And what I'd like for you to note there is the age of the participants. And so even though uh, these are very serious activities, it's activities that kids 12 to 18 can be involved in. So they're, they're performing missions that are vital to someone's security. Um, another asset that's been brought to us uh, in recent years are drones. Uh, these uh, are military grade drones and they can be used for search and rescue, they can be used for after, uh, after event uh, assessments, damage assessments, like after a hurricane or after a tornado. And I think we have 10 of these now in the, uh, in the state, different organizations that are trained and using and so you know, it's, uh, it's just another asset that Civil Air Patrol has been given and can bring to the table. As far as nationwide, uh, as soon as this is nationwide, uh, we actually have a units overseas, but I didn't check uh, this to see, but I'm assuming this is just in the U.S. You know, 550 aircraft, and we perform 85% of the missions for, uh, in the continental U.S. for uh, missing aircraft. And the Civil Air Patrol is credited to saving on average about 70 laps per year. Another mission which is not, uh, <clears throat> not done, I don't think, in North Carolina, but would probably be done around sensitive areas like uh, Washington, D.C., or maybe around power plants, is, uh, or restricted air, airspace, that's another way of saying it. Uh, Civil Air Patrol aircraft working in conjunction with the Air Force will uh, pretend they're flying into that airspace, that restricted airspace, and it gives the military the opportunity to spot them, identify them, and escort them out. Because, you know, that they're again, it's not a call practice, but it is something you know, that assists the military in keeping their capability and their operation in the session. Another mission for North Carolina, Civil Air Patrol in particular, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think Civil Air Patrol has been passed as the go-to organization. Yeah, so 100% of the pods, which are points of distribution, 
are usually manned by civil air patrol personnel. Uh, if there's a hurricane or any new event that happens where goods need to be distributed, food, water, uh, clothing, whatever, then civil air patrol is the organization that mans these pods in different places in the state. Uh, here again, you see a lot of kids there. Uh, our, our squadron has 12 members that are currently trained to operate in man a pod, and it's fairly uh, not difficult. It's, uh, there are certain procedures that have to be followed, and the training has to be done. You don't just go and set up stuff in front of the pod. In North Carolina, there are 34 squadrons. We're part of Group 6, which is a area ranging from Asheboro to Statesville to Charlotte. Um, and you know, I, I think a lot of our squadron is probably one of the older ones in the state. We were just talking about that. We don't know exactly how old some of these squadrons are, but we think we're one of the older ones. So, you know, why should you care and what can you do? Uh, this one I want to step right in where I'm reading, get my glasses in great. Um, young people need positive role models. And I think they need positive programs and a reason for being uh, a purpose, things that build character and give them a feeling that they're part of something. And Civil Air Patrol does that. <clears throat> you know, if you're part of a pod team and you're set up and you're actually, you know, you're 12 years old and you're handing out water to people after a hurricane, you're definitely involved and you're definitely and, you know, these are the type of activities that kids need to be part of. They need to know that they're contributing and uh, have, a, have a purpose. Uh, by being a member, and this would apply to any of you that might be interested, then you gain skills that you can use to help your community, state, and nation. And that would be whether it be first aid training, communications training, POGS training. Uh, we have all the different uh, different types of things that you could do. If you like flying, you could uh, you could. Uh, be a civil air patrol pilot, uh, you could be a photographer in one of the planes. All of these things require training, but uh, they are available. Uh, it's a program where you can see the fruits of your efforts. Uh, I mentioned you can see the fruits of my efforts. You know, I'm just so honored to be a part of a group that uh, where uh, kids that I worked with are now no longer kids, they're adults and they're contributing. You can be as active as you want. We meet every Thursday night at the Ashford Airport. Um, you don't have to come to be there every Thursday night. If you wanted to be, whatever, uh, involved in finance, or involved in aerospace education, or whatever, you know, you could pick whatever you wanted to be involved in and just come when that happens. You know, it's not a requirement you do there all the time. Uh, you don't have to be a pilot, you don't have to be formed in the military, you don't have to have, to have any particular knowledge or uh, aerospace education knowledge, you know, all you have to have is a desire to serve. And I think everybody that comes to present here asks you for something. So I'm just going to pitch it up. Um, we have a lot of guests, they're young people, and they come from all varieties, all, uh, all types of families. Uh, some are broken families, some are low income, and uh, for a cadet to go to summer encampment, it cost 125 bucks. Now, to most of us, that's not a lot of money. But for some families, it is. But for every cadet that joins, they have to have uniforms, they have to have specific gear if they're going to participate in a search and rescue mission, and that can run up to $400. So if anybody is interested in helping with the cost of a cadet program or sponsoring a cadet with anything, you know, just let me know. Uh, we do have an open house, I'll put a page on each paper on uh, August the 24th. If you have any interest at all, just want to learn more, come on down. It wasn't just you can see what your big kids. And so now, we'll have about 30 questions. This is where you can. <laughs> yes? Well, you mentioned the aerospace education, and then you, and you didn't specifically mention drones at that point, but you did later on in the presentation. Is that part of the education that you do now? And how much have you seen the drone usage grow <laughs> in the things that Civil Air Patrol did? At our squadron, we do not have a drone. Uh, certain squadrons do. I don't know what the nearest one is. So the nearest would be Gang River, uh, up toward Virginia. Uh, that's 
probably where the majority of our drone operators are. We do have some over towards Charlotte as well. Uh, the problem is getting the drones, uh, the funding for the drones to each wing. Um, so that's something that North Carolina wing has slowly been growing in. Uh, one of the things that has been happening though is the local sheriff's departments and uh, emergency response crews, when something bad does happen and they figure out that we have trained members ready to respond for it, uh, it's been kind of eye opening. And so North Carolina wing has started to push that more and more. But Civil Air Patrol does offer uh, a course for cadets uh, and senior members alike to get their drone pilot license. So it's called Part, one, part 107, uh, Drone Pilot Certificate. So um, hopefully we'll be doing that at our squadron here in the next coming year. Wayne, this trying to start it on the East Coast. Has it spread? Is it all over the nation now? Yeah, it is. We are actually in what other foreign countries? Guam? Guam, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, we have a squadron there. They actually just won a national competition, so they came to the States for a competition there. And then uh, we also have a squadron in uh, Europe, at least Germany, um, and then kind of spread around. Uh, Alaska has a lot of squadrons as well, very active in emergency um, services. Yeah, and that reminds me of another activity that's available for cadets, and that's the International Air Cadet Exchange. Uh, and that was another high point of my life. I didn't get to go anywhere, but one summer for two weeks, we had a cadet from Norway come and live with us, and that's just a neat experience to have any foreign person come and live in your house, and you know you get to learn about them and their culture in the country. Yes. Oh, nothing. Uh, nothing in uh, Davidson County. There's not one. There, there used to be one in Davidson, but uh, I think it's been gone now for a few years. Well, if there are any other questions that they want to, yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Well, it's a long one. But the, if, so if someone, the search and rescue, is that the, how does that come about? I mean, is the search and rescue for planes? Is the search and rescue for lost people? What's the search and rescue that y'all assist with? Well, normally, Civil Air Patrol is the go-to organization if it's a lost plane, and there's a process. Can you describe the process? Or? Sure. So we have to be requested. Uh, we, we can go prior to an emergency and, and kind of meet with our local sheriff's departments, uh, state senators, and, and kind of explain what we, what we do. Uh, but we do have to be requested. So like uh, uh, Captain Underwood mentioned earlier, um, the senator would contact our wing uh, or national organization of Civil Air Patrol and it would just kind of trickle down. Um, but we do missing planes, uh, missing persons. I know in North Carolina alone this year, I think we've been called out more for missing persons than missing airplanes. Uh, we also do missing boats. So if there's a boat that goes missing and we're requested to go out and assist with that, um, we have trained crew members ready to go and, and assist with that. So. It does have to be requested of us. And that's one of the kind of barriers, uh, to kind of touch on what you were saying earlier, is you see a lot of the pictures, they're kids out there. I mean, they're cadets, ages 12 to 18, and, and then some senior members thrown in the mix. And so one of the hardest things to overcome is, is getting requested. But as we get requested, each, each time, you know, the, the responding agency realizes it's a bunch of kids coming out to help, but they're always impressed with the professionalism and how they're trained and how they operate for that mission. And then those agencies are typically the ones that request us more and more uh, after that first time. So um, yeah, missing plane, missing person, missing boat, we'll go out and look for them. So y'all would come to Davidson County if they asked you to? Absolutely. There's squadrons all over the state, you know, that we, in fact, a couple of the missing persons that we had to go look for was down in, in South Carolina earlier this year. Um, so squadrons all over the state, as well as Virginia, Tennessee, uh, South Carolina, um, you know, squadrons can get requested from all over. And depending on the emergency, you'll see a different size of response. Yeah, and depending upon what the emergency is, then you have to have a certain level of training as a member before you can even participate. So you have to be trained as a ground team member before you could go. You can't just say, I'm in Civil Air Patrol and show up. So, you know, there is required training you know, to be part of the admissions. Yes? Kind of quick description of exactly what the competition is involved. You were speaking earlier about competition. About Puerto Rico, we competition. Okay. 
Yes. So uh, we have all sorts of competitions, drill and ceremonies. So going out with uh, rifle teams or march, you know, going out marching, different squadrons and flights can compete in that. Uh, we have physical fitness competitions. Um, we have uh, actual rifle competitions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so you mentioned Norway. Uh, one from Mr. Lewin. Puerto Rico won. Puerto Rico. Uh, so what kind of competition do they involved in to uh, what did they win? So that was a, a national competition that came up. All squadrons within the uh, U.S. was able to participate in that. Puerto Rico was included as well. Uh, and that covered all sorts of subjects, aerospace, drill and ceremonies, uh, emergency response, things like that. Um, even Cyber Patriot, which is a program that Civil Air Patrol uses to help um, look for, for missing persons. So kind of like an assortment of what Civil Air Patrol does, and they got scored on different parts of the competition. So um, they got first, Puerto Rico, a squadron in Alaska got second, and then one of our squadrons in Group 6 uh, got third, but then was bumped down to fourth place. But uh, here in North Carolina, we got fourth place. So. Yes. You mentioned rifle competition. Are there any circumstances under which uh, any of your members would go on a search and rescue of uh, arm? No, no, absolutely not. No. No. We, they're actually, uh, we don't even carry knives of size. You know, we, we definitely want to be presented to the public as a group that's there to help and is not a threat in any kind of way. So you don't help law enforcement catch any bad guys? No. Well, I want to give you one more slide here because I hope they I'll give you something about me that you didn't know, and I'll give you something about uh, Mr. Hunt here that you didn't know probably. Uh, everybody's seen these signs in, on the side of the road and people's yards. This is the guy that's responsible for those. Oh. Oh.